We've all been there, struggling to get our homework done at the last minute because we started too late, cursing ourselves for not starting earlier or having better time management skills. I know I've been in those positions quite a few times, and in the last one year or two, I've gotten a lot better at managing my time, so I end up in those situations less frequently. In this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about some of the strategies I use to manage my time better so that you can hopefully have better time management skills yourself and also end up with more time to do the things you actually care about and spend less time working on things that don't really matter to you. Let's get straight into it. Let's talk about what time management actually is. A lot of people like to view time management as scheduling out every single minute of their day, but I like to view it as following a set of guidelines so you can free up as much time as possible. The point of time management is not to fill up every second of your day with work, but rather to free up time for you to work on things that you actually care about. Obviously, sometimes you're going to have to work a lot and just hold crazy days, but more often than not, you'll be able to find a little bit of free time for you to work on things you care about, which is the whole point. Now, my guidelines help me do four things. I break time management down into four parts. Prioritization, scheduling and planning, eliminating distractions, and then actually working efficiently when the time comes. Let's talk about each of these parts. Prioritizing your work is something you should be doing on a daily or weekly basis. I like to do it on a daily basis. Every day I'll wake up and either in my little bullet journal or on my Notion dashboard, I'll write down my to-dos for the day in order of priority. Let's talk about how I actually prioritize these to-dos. I use something called the Eisenhower matrix. It's not very complicated. It's very simple and you've probably seen it before. Basically, you have to decide whether a task is important or urgent or both. Now, if a task is important and urgent, that means you should probably have that at the very top of your priority list. For example, if you have an exam tomorrow, then you should start to study for that as soon as you possibly can. But if you have an assignment that's due in like a week, then that's important, but it's not exactly urgent. So you can move that down your priority list. And if you have time in the day, you can get to it. Now, if something is not important and not urgent, you know, like busy work, then push that away. Don't even really think about it. Just fit it in whenever you can. And if something is really not important and not urgent at all, just delete it from your to-do list and never even think about it again. Think of clubs that you don't want to do, right? If there's some clubs that you're a part of and they're not really bringing any joy or value to your life, just drop them. You know, if they're not helping your resume or if they're not fun, then what's the point of doing them? You shouldn't be doing things just to do them, to delete them. That's what that not important and not urgent part of the Eisenhower matrix is about. Now, for the urgent but not important part, people say to delegate your work. Now, for me personally, I don't really have anybody I can delegate my work to. If you have somebody you can delegate your work to, that's great for you. Go ahead and do that. But in most scenarios, I like to view things that are urgent as important almost all the time, but not everything that's important is urgent, if you get what I mean. So everything that's urgent for me, I'll always make that my number one priority. Even if it is something that's like really simple busy work that I just forgot to turn in and it's due today, I'll do it first, even if it isn't very important. Now, if you can delegate something, go ahead and do it, but it's not really applicable to me and I'm assuming many of you. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about actually planning and scheduling your work. Every student knows that work can be broken down into two types, busy work or deep work. Busy work is work that you can get done at basically any time. It doesn't require a lot of concentration. Things like daily participation assignments. Deep work is work that's hard, challenging, and really requires you to focus. So challenging problem sets, essays, or readings, those you should probably be focusing on a lot. Now, the good thing about busy work is that you can do it whenever you really want. You can do it in between sets at the gym. You can do it while eating lunch. You can do it while watching YouTube or TV. So you don't really need to schedule it in. Just do it whenever you have free time while you're doing something else. It's something you can multitask. Deep work, on the other hand, you really need to have no distractions pop up because that's going to take you right out of your flow state and then it'll be hard to get back in and you're going to be less efficient when you're doing work, which we'll talk about just a little bit later. But for me personally, I like to schedule deep work one hour after my classes end or in between classes if I have big enough of a time block. Now, this is great because it allows me to stay in work mode because I'm switching from academics to academics while also still getting a little bit of a rest. I notice that the later I start my work, the less efficient I am because the less in work mode I am. The closer to class time I am, the better I am at actually getting my work done. To facilitate this, I mark eight to five as my work hours. Now, work hours is basically just saying, if I have free time from eight to five, I'm going to be working. Most of the time, I'll actually be able to get all my work done for the day in that time block because I only have about three hours of class a day on average. But of course, you know, sometimes you'll have over full hours and I'll just work overtime. Well, not overtime. I'll just work past five to get that done. But most of the time, because I've marked eight to five as work hours, I don't actually end up getting distracted and working on other things. Now, obviously, on the weekends, this isn't what happens because right now it's 1127 and I'm filming this YouTube video, but I do count that as work. But I do get a lot of my homework done during the week so that I have free time on the weekends to actually do things I care about, like this YouTube channel or building coding side projects. And I think you guys should also do that when you're figuring out your schedule. Figure out what work hours work for you. 
figure out when you're most productive and make sure that during those hours, you're only working until your work is done and then you can really do whatever you want. Now, of course, for some people, it's nice to wake up early in the morning and do that. That's why my work hours are like eight to five because I like to wake up earlier, like around six. Some people like to, you know, grind from like seven to eight, from seven to three a.m. So seven p.m. to three a.m. So figure out what you are and then adjust your schedule accordingly. Once you've done that, you should be able to find yourself really getting your work done in an efficient manner as long as you're making sure to schedule your deep work in efficiently. I can make an entire video about eliminating distractions, so let me know if you want to see that, but I'm going to keep this short and sweet. Your biggest distractions are going to come from your phone or your laptop. They're going to come from the internet. Getting rid of your phone as a distraction is pretty easy. Just turn off the ringer, put it on do not disturb, and then throw it in your backpack or drawer. Throw it somewhere you can't see it. And if for some reason you want to keep it on your desk or within eyesight, put it face down so you don't see the notifications going off and get distracted. Dealing with your laptop is a little bit harder because you're going to be doing most of your work on your laptop probably. And to deal with this, I personally use a browser extension called Limit. This blocks distracting sites, you know, all the social media sites, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Reddit, whatever, and YouTube. So you can actually focus on getting your work done. Now, obviously this won't work 100% of the time because sometimes you'll go on YouTube to find tutorials, but you'll end up watching six hours of rock climbing videos and not getting any work done and then procrastinating and then ending up having to do assignments at the last minute. Show me as a convenient trick to record the podcast. But that's besides the point of not really relevant. I don't know why I ranted there, but whatever. You need to be able to eliminate these distractions. And a good way of doing this is using a browser extension to get rid of recommendations on YouTube. Uh, the browser extension, I don't remember what it's called because I don't use it, but it basically gets rid of all recommendations on YouTube, including the homepage recommendations. So you can only use the search bar. It's really useful for staying on task and only looking up what you need to. Once you've eliminated these distractions, you're done with half the battle and we can move on to actually working efficiently. The other half is just sitting down and starting to grind. The first 15 minutes of any work session are probably a struggle because you're just getting into the flow. But after you get into that flow, you'll find yourself being able to do those problems a lot quicker and more efficiently, be able to write quicker and more efficiently. Just be able to be more focused on your work than everything else that's happening around. This is why I'm not the biggest fan of the Pomodoro method. I take some time to get into that flow when I start working, but once I do, I can work for one, two, three, four hours at a stretch while listening to music. I'm not a robot, but when I'm thinking about the 10 minute break that comes along with that Pomodoro method, I'm going to be thinking more about what I want to be doing during that break than what I'm actually focusing on right now. I'm going to be thinking more about the break than the work I'm doing. I don't know if that's true for you guys, but if it is, then the Pomodoro method probably isn't the best method for you to be using. And you should instead just try to sit down and grind things out for one to two hours until they're done. That's kind of what I like to do. I like to start something and then finish as much of it as I can in one solid study session rather than taking breaks through that. Now, of course, that doesn't work for everybody, but you can try things and see what works for you. The Pomodoro method or just grinding things out. Now, another thing that really helps is trying to find an environment that works for you. I love my room. It's great, but I'm more likely to be watching YouTube videos and goofing around here than anywhere else on campus. If I'm working in the library, I'm not going to be watching YouTube videos because I'll be scared of other people judging me if I'm not working. Weird motivation, but it does work. Don't knock it until you try it. And of course, there's something about a library that makes you just want to work. Who would have guessed? Those are all the tips I have to help you manage your time better. I hope it helps and I really wish you the best of luck on your work. I post videos at least once every week, so subscribe if you want to see them. Like and comment if you enjoyed the video. Share it with somebody else that needs time management tips. And thank you again so much for watching through the entire video. I'll see you in the next one. I hope you have a great day. Peace out.